Hey, 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 Texas Study students, this is Coach Signs, welcoming you back to another one of our video lessons. Today's video lesson, we're going to be talking about Chapter 11.1 and the Republic of Texas. Now, if you remember from our previous video lessons, Texas has won its independence in the year 1836 from Mexico, no longer a state of Mexico, but now its own country. Now, with the independence of Texas, there came some problems that the Republic of Texas had to learn to deal with. One of the major problems that faced the Texas was that Mexico and the U.S. both refused to recognize Texas independence. Now, the reason that Mexico did not recognize their independence was because they had forced Santa Ana to sign the Treaties of Velasco in exchange for his life. So they didn't agree with the treaty and how that was. Now, as for the United States, they refused to recognize Texas independence because they did not want any problems or any trouble with Mexico. And the, the reason was they just didn't want to go to war with them. That is why they did not recognize Texas independence. Now, therefore, as a result of this, Texas and Mexico were still at war. Now, not only were they at war for the treat, the area that was fought for before the Treaty of Velasco, which was from about the Nueces River all the way up to right about there, they were at war for all this dispute, un, excuse me, disputed area, which was from right here all the way up here. Which remember, in the Treaty of Velasco, Santa Ana had given away all the land north of the Rio Grande River. Now, the Rio Grande River starts down here comes all the way up through Texas and all the way up into Colorado. So all this land was another reason why Texas and Mexico were at war, because it was undisputed. Now, at the beginning of the Republic of Texas, Stephen F. Austin served as a Secretary of State uh, for three months. Now, if you remember correctly, Stephen F. Austin, as you can see here, was the father of Texas. Now, unfortunately, after three months, he died on December 1836 at the age of 43. This was truly a sad day in the history of Texas. Now if you remember correctly, Stephen F. Austin uh, from your previous video lessons was, started off helping Texas grow as an empresario at the age of 27. So uh, he dies at the age of 43. He helped the Texas people and the Texas as a, a state in Mexico and as a new country grow. His service to the people of Texas totaled uh, 16 years, guys. 16 years. Yeah. Now, before Sam Houston was elected president, if you remember from your previous video lessons, there was a provisional government, remember? And there was a provisional president. He was named David Burnett. Now, while he was the very first president, uh, provisional president of Texas, he made the capital uh, of Texas, the first capital of Texas, Columbia, Texas, which you can see here in this map is over here on the east side of Texas, right? Now, here you see the building in which the first capital building, which was in Columbia, right? Now, uh, however, many Texans felt that the town was way too small and way too isolated uh, from all of the other people surrounding in Texas. So that's why a lot of people did not like this capital. They wanted a more centrally located capital in Texas. Now as a result of trying to move the capital, uh, Texas got a new capital in itself. Now two brothers named John and Augustus Allen, which you can see in this picture right here, a picture of these two gentlemen, built the city of Houston in honor of the great leader Sam Houston himself. And here we can see a picture of where Houston is located in the map, a very big city now in our days, right? This became the new capital of Texas. Now, but as you can see on the picture down here in the star, uh, you know, it's still not where a lot of the people of Texas wanted. It's still in the east side of Texas, not centrally located where people had originally wanted the new capital of Texas. So, uh, you know, if Austin, which is in the middle of Texas, was not the very first capital of Texas. Essentially, it was around the third city that they moved it to. 
Now, one of the things that Sam Houston and many of the Texans wanted to do was annexation to the United States. Now, you're probably asking, what does annexation mean? Annexation means, as you can see right there, underline, to join together or to join one territory to another. So they wanted Texas to be part of the United States. Now, since most Texans had immigrated from the United States, the majority of them voted for annexation to Texas. Now, unfortunately, the U.S. Congress blocked this move since Texas was a slave state. Now, if you remember what a slave state was, was a state where they could freely own and have slaves to work their land and areas, right? But unfortunately, many congressmen from the northern parts of the United States did not want to add another state that had slaves to the U.S. Uh, country. So that's why they ignored and said no to Texas' its first attempt of annexation. Now, another one of the major problems that the Texans faced was a financial problem or problems with money. When Sam Houston began his presidency, the Texans already owed a million dollars of debt because of the Texas Revolution. Now, the reason that they had acquired a public debt of a million dollars was because during the Revolution, they needed to buy ammo, supplies, cannons, uniforms for the cavalry, and a lot of things that they needed to be able to fight Santa Ana during the Texas Revolution. Now, while during Sam Houston's presidency, he tried many times and had many attempts to try to raise money to be able to pay this public debt off, but all his attempts during his presidency ended up failing, and his debt continued to pile on the back of Texans, as you see here. Another major problem that they faced was Native Texans, as you can see here, these Native Americans. Native Texans began raids against settlers since they were angered by the growing number of Anglo-Americans moving into their lands. They were more and more upset that people were moving into the lands and taking over them, so they began to do more and more attacks. Another thing that greatly upset the native Texans was that Congress, Texas Congress, also refused to ratify, that means refused to accept, a treaty that Sam Houston had made with the Cherokees during the Texas Revolution. Now, the treaty that they had made, guys, was a very important treaty to the Cherokee and to Sam Houston. Sam Houston had promised them land in East Texas, right, that they were going to be able to keep their land, right? But unfortunately, these lands were very, very rich farmland. Now, when the people and the, uh, the people of Texas did not like natives and did not like for them to be disturbed, right? They didn't want to be uh, disturbed or say, no, hey, we want these lands. We're going to get these lands. So that is why Texas Congress ignored or refused to ratify this treaty that Sam Houston had had with them. So in return, the native Texans decided to say, you know what? You're going to say no. We're just going to keep attacking you guys for telling us no. Now, as a result of this, Sam Houston himself had to hire the Texas Rangers. Now, if you remember, the Texas Rangers, we talked about them in Chapter 10, right? They are a group of soldiers organized during the Texas Revolution, right? They were organized during the Texas Revolution to help out the native raids of back then as well. Now, this group controlled the number of native Texas raids, all right? Sam Houston hired them to protect the people of Texas. They hired, he hired them so that make sure that these native Texans would not get out of hand, and he and these Texas Rangers were able to protect the people that lived there. Here in this picture, you can see how the Texas Rangers used to dress up back then. They wore, you know, your regular cowboy outfit. They had vests, gun on the sides with the belt, gun belt, long rifles, right? As you can see in the picture here. And actually in this picture, they have a Mexican prisoner right there, in this right here. Now, the Texas Constitution limited the first president to a two-year term. That means Sam Houston could only be the president for two years. And no president could be elected two times in a row. So that means Sam Houston was elected first president, right? The first official president 
of Texas in 1836. So, in the election of 1838, Sam Houston's vice president, Mayor Bulamar, the man pictured right here in this picture, ended up winning the election for president. So, after two years, he could no longer run again. He would have to wait a second time, okay? So here we see Mayor Bulamar, which ended up winning the second presidency of Texas. Now, Mayor Bulamar's presidency was going to be able to be a total of three years. Now, this was because the first president was only allowed to do a two-year term. After that, it was three years. Now, we will continue talking about Mayor Bulamar and his presidency in the next video lesson. This concludes our video lesson today on Chapter 11.1 and the Republic of Texas. This is Coach Signs, signing out.